Welcome to Worship Tutorials. My name is Bradford. In this video, we are going to teach you how to play the guitar parts, both of them, for The Father's House by Corey Asbury. Uh, if you watched our playthrough, or a lot of people will comment asking for the whole video, and we actually do that. That is what we start with. We start with the actual playthrough, and in that video, we kind of typically take both guitar parts and make them into one. Or we choose what we think would feel best if you were the only guitarist on stage. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can see the link below. In this video and in any tutorial video we do, we kind of approach it as not just giving you the right notes. That would be giving a man a fish. We do more of the teach a man to fish because Brian, he's a grown man. Fishing is not that hard. Thank you, Ron Swanson. Uh, in other words, when I, when I'm teaching you, I'm going to ensure that I'm showing you or explaining to you the method or the positioning or the technique we're using, because that serves a couple purposes. I really think that that's how we get better guitar when we know the why behind the what. And it also makes it a, quite a bit easier if you have to change keys. Um, I'm teaching it in the original key today. It's in D flat. I'm actually playing it later this week in the key of D. And when I did this playthrough, when I prepared to do this, I didn't really have to think much. I just had to whoosh, shift it down a half step because I was using shapes and methods. So let us get into it. Uh, if you're curious, this is a Shelton Skyflight. It's a Strat, it's amazing. I'm putting a capo on the first fret so I can play chords. I can play open chords. If you're playing lead guitar, which we'll get to like, describing some of those parts, you could not use a capo. If you wanna play bar chords, that's your prerogative. But I like the voicings that we'll get into. Um, I'm using a G7 because I love it and they're amazing capos. And we're using the brand new FM9, Fractal FM9. If you've used any of our Fractal, Fractal products, they'll all sound the same, which is awesome. But the FM9 is an all-in-one floor unit. The patch is available for this unit and a whole bunch of other units. Those are all in the description as well. Now that I've talked your ear off and you're about to write, will you just get on with it already? I'm gonna get on with it because that's what we do. Also use the chapter markers below the video. That's why they are there. Some people want this information. That's why we do it. So in this song, we start out with a lead intro riff and we re repeat it one more time, kind of sort of, because there's actually some added stuff to it. So I'm gonna teach you the first time through and then I'll teach you what we do the second time through. I like the neck pickup on the strap for this. I think it sounds really, really good. I think that's kind of what I'm hearing either way. Um, the way I remember what I'm doing here is I'm using the D shape as my form of reference. We're in the key of D flat, so up here, that is a D flat triad of sorts. Um, if you scooted it up one fret, that'd be D. You'd be playing it just like you would a D chord, but using this finger to bar down. So you could think of it like that. That's my point of reference, and I'm sharing that because like I said, like knowing a point of reference and knowing what you're doing helps. So when you're using that D shape, in this case, we are starting at the note on the 14th fret, that is a D flat. If you were to play it on the 15th fret, that B string is a D, D note. Same, same if you were to actually play a D chord down here, that's a D note on the third fret. So that's my reference point, if depending on what key you're playing this song in. So we're gonna start there. It starts on the one, the first note in the scale. and goes back a half step. What we're doing next is kind of this little skipping thing. Um, you could do it one way pretty easily where we're going to drop to the 11th fret on the B string and this hammer on and kind of like choke it, kind of do like a staccato thing on the 13th fret. And then slide back down again to the 9th fret up to the 11th. So it's kind of the reverse. So you could do it like that. That That's an easier way to do it. If you are like, you know what? I need a straightforward way to play the lead line. That's it, keep it all in the B string. But what we're hearing is some little extra bits going on a lower string on the D string. Um, and so what we're gonna do is same thing here, 13 to 12. But we're gonna fret on the D string. We're gonna fret the 13th fret. And we're gonna do this little it gives it a little extra movement. It's not as open. It kind of keeps things moving, especially with like a dotted eighth delay going on. It really sounds really nice. Here's just that real quick if you want to hear that. So when we add everything on it, it kind of gives some things. So the second half of the riff is a very similar feel, just different notes, right? So nine to 11. 
So we're gonna do the 11th fret on the D string. That's the first time through. For the second time we do this riff, again, you could play it just like we just explained it, but when you listen to the stems, you can hear that they kind of juice it up a little bit. Um, think of it this way. Let's think of our B flat minor chord, which is our six, our A flat chord, which is our five, and our G flat, which is our four. And kind of keep those shape, the idea of those shapes in your head here. Um, and so we're gonna hit basically using the D string, using our, our third finger to kind of mute the G string. So I like to do this a lot. I would recommend getting used to this positioning first to learn this part, because we're just picking the D and the B string if you imagined these chords. It's B flat minor, A flat, G. So you can kind of hear that part hiding in there. So we're gonna hit this. All we're doing is sliding down from 15th on the D string to 14th on the B string. And yes, I'm counting these frets in the moment as I'm saying to them, so work with me. And then we're pulling down to the 13th fret on both the D and the B string. And then we're gonna do that riff that we did earlier. We're gonna do the same thing that, as we did earlier, but we're adding this 11th fret on the D string and the 9th fret on the B hammering on to the 11th. So utilizing these chord shapes that we have, that we already know, um, if you don't know bar chords and you're playing lead guitar, I would take a step back and kind of learn some of those shapes because it helps you know where notes on the guitar are. I utilize this method to play stuff all the time, whether it's just stripping back chords or playing um, swells or adding something in between, whatever. All right, so let's talk effects real quick. Um, when we were listening to it, it sounded like the first time through that there was a little bit of chorus. Um, and it sounded like the second time through, there was like a little more dirt with that chorus, which kind of emphasized that chorus a little bit more. Um, and you know, do what, do what you wish. The chorus doesn't make it or break it. Neither does the delay or the reverb, but I'd say the most important thing that dotted eight delay really helps keep things moving and you know, it's worship. So big verbs. So I'll play the first riff uh, as it well, as it goes, and then I'll play the second riff as it goes. Here's the second one, but with more a little bit of dirt, and remember, it's got those extra notes in it. Because there's a Vega trim, I get a little flutter. That's that. I think, honestly, that's the hardest part of the song. Uh, honestly, from here on out, what we're doing is picking out chords, playing some easy single note stuff. The verse and the chorus both are utilizing the same chords. Um, and so verse, guitar one is playing the lead stuff and in the verses kind of sits back and does a little bit of swelly, swelly stuff, which if you would like to learn those note for note, you're welcome to do that using the multi-tracks or the stems. Um, but otherwise, just do some stuff, fill some space, depending on what the needs are for where you're at. Second guitar is playing rhythm. And that is why I have the cape on the first fret. I wanted to have these big full chords and I wanted to have these consistent and this parallel movement in the notes. Um, I've said this before, but part writing for choirs, it is not ideal to have that parallel movement. You don't want voices, harmonies moving you know, in the same intervals because it just sounds kind of stale. And there are moments where that sounds good, um, but on guitar, I find that it keeps things less in your face. Um, if we were to play the chord progression and not follow that rule, and we were to do more just exactly what the chords are, it sounds a little too, to use a phrase that I like, Mickey Mouse. It just sounds a little too happy and joyful and plain and boring. <laughs> Like, those are the chords, A minor, G, F, C. Um, so we're gonna play an A minor chord. Typically, it sounds like this. 
But what I do is I pick up our finger off of the G string and I put my pinky down on the E string on the fourth fret. Because that is where our G is going to be, or the G chord, right? Because this is in D flat. And I'm gonna keep the pinky on the E string and my first finger on the B string, and I'm gonna just move to the G, the bass note, which is really a, a flat. Because it's got this consistency. And then I'm gonna move to an F. So basically the whole time, I'm keeping my first finger on the second fret of the B string. Again, uh, this is not relative to the capo, we're, you know, just the fret that is the fret, okay? So here's that in context. Now, I know that some people may not like using their thumb. I really like how that sounds. If you cannot use your thumb, which I get, I have ginormous hands. Um, the easy way to do this F chord, don't worry about that. You're, Bass note here is not as important because you're gonna have an acoustic player, a keys player, and or a bass player hitting that as well. Um, the way I do it is to keep this, this open string. Sounds so nice. Just focus on your top four strings. So you want your first finger to be on that second fret again, and then you want your pinky, which how I would do it because of placement, just way easier on the fourth fret of the D string, and then you're basically playing everything else open. So we got this A minor seven to a C. So keeping these consistent notes as you're moving makes this sound more glued together, as opposed to, like I said. Like, it sounds more cohesive, it sounds more beautiful. And if you're like me, I really like doing a C over G because basically you're adding a five to the bass and your bass and piano probably are playing the lower C. So even by itself, it's fine, but in context, it sounds really great. You can hammer on. I just, basically what I do there is instead of a regular C, I put my pinky where I'd normally put my third finger on the A string, and then I put my third finger on the fret above, which is where the G is. So in this case, it's an A flat. And I hammer on. It's a nice sound. I'm camping out here because guitar two is playing basically the same chord progression through verse one, verse two, chorus one, chorus two, and the bridge. So we just went through a whole big section. And so I wanted to kind of expand upon the chords because we could have just left it as, here are the chords, play them. Um, first time through, we like delay, especially an analog delay that sits underneath. It kind of makes your sound a little more, gives it like a little bit of a pad texture as opposed to, I mean, there's some verb on this. Adding that delay kind of keeps things together. So you're gonna be doing that for verse one and then the chorus, verse two, and then the next chorus, and you're just gonna be switching dynamics. I keep it on the neck pickup, personal preference for verse one and the chorus, go to the bridge pickup for verse two, and when I get to chorus two, I add a little bit of extra gain. When you get to the first chorus though, there is a lead part that if you are playing with two guitars, this is the only additional thing you're gonna do here that's different. We didn't do it in the playthrough because the playthrough is, let's approach it as your one guitar player. So the first chorus I did the guitar one part and then the rest of the song I stuck to chords. So if you are playing with two guitarists, um, your guitarist, lead guitarist would do this part. And if you're playing with just one, I would suggest doing this part first time through, chords the rest of the way through. So here's our D flat bar chord. Keep this shape in mind here. All this is, is I'm switching fingers over here to the sixth fret, and I'm doing this on the D, the G, and the B. Okay? Um, if here is our B flat minor chord here, which is based on the sixth fret, um, basically it's like a power chord if you're familiar, but we're playing all six strings as opposed to just, just the lower three. So if you listen to that, you have this B flat note on the D string. If you take that, and then you take that other half of this D flat chord, like I was showing you here, you have this. 
So this is an inversion you can use for a minor chord if you're just trying to get like higher strings. You could just play a full on minor chord like this and just play the top three or four strings. If you would rather, that helps you have perspective and it helps you kind of, like I know the chord, I'm just gonna play these strings, that's easier, knock yourself out. I like to play just what I'm doing because it's it just feels different and I approach it differently. So we're gonna play this. That's what's going on in the choruses with varying levels of gain and verb and delay depending on where you're at in the song. Um, so right here is the eighth fret on the D string and then the sixth fret on both the G and the B. And if you're barring this whole thing, you're really, you can play this or what I heard was just that one A flat note. And then we're gonna go to the F shape, which the way I would do it in this case and what I'm hearing is actually a method I've taught the F shape, like using this in F shape chord. We're gonna stack them up strings and fret wise. Okay, we'll start with second fret on the B, third fret on the G, fourth fret, on the D. You can use that shape for any major chord. You can wrap your thumb if you'd like to. Let's get that bass to a C. So here it is in context. Last time through, we add this note on the E string on the fourth fret. First time through, we're using like a, some chorus on it and you know, you can keep that going. And then as the song goes on, bridge pickup, extra overdrive, whatever. That's the lead part that guitar one is doing while the other guitar is playing those same chords. All right, so we get to the bridge. There's this breakdown. We're gonna go to the bridge pickup because the timbre sounds great don't like that, you can do what you want. But we're gonna hang out on the one, palm muted. That's oh, that's the wrong song. Wrong song. <laughs> we're hanging on the one for a while. There are four bridges. For two bridges, you're hanging out on the one. The third bridge, you come in with a chord progression. We've talked about chord shapes. You're gonna come in on the C to the F, to the G, to the A minor, back to the G, to the F, to the C. All right, that's the third bridge. The fourth bridge, you're gonna play some inversions. You're, well, an inversion. You're gonna play a C over E. To an F, to the G, A minor, G, back to the F, to the C. And now you're going to tag it. You're gonna hit the A minor, to the G, to the F, to the C. You're gonna hit just like that, just diamonds, and that's it. So I'll play it in context. Okay, so that's it. Uh, hopefully amongst, amongst all of our shenanigans, you have learned more than just how to play this song correctly. Um, you've learned some techniques that you can borrow for other songs or to help you learn parts for other songs. And uh, hope maybe you've learned some new chord voicings. What I use in this video is first off, really what I thought I heard to begin with. But second off, uh, it was also just the way that I like to play in the key of C when I'm using C shapes, for example. So that is it. Again, we have patches for the song for a plethora of units, FM9, FM3, Axe FX3, Helix. Links are down below if you'd like to get them. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time we do some video about some song. In conclusion, I'd like to add, if you haven't yet subscribed to Worship Tutorials to the YouTube channel. What are you doing? I don't, I don't understand. You're doing yourself a disservice. Why, why haven't, why? What now is the time? Before you leave this video, 
most of you already have. Analytics tell us that's that true. a very tiny fraction of people watch to the end. Uh, so you're probably already subscribed. I'm one of those people, to be honest. But if you haven't yet subscribed, please, do it. Please. Subscribe. So Jesus said, it's okay to not play the bridge. And then you would say to me, I haven't played a bridge. And then I would, as Christ would say, you are correct. You haven't played a bridge. You've already played 10 bridges. And the bridge that you're playing now is not the last bridge that you're going to play. You follow me? I do. However, I don't hang out on bridges it's the that woman long. At the well. I cut but, songs that have... But, uh, uh, you know, with bridges and songs instead of, instead of lovers.